Facebook. So welcome everyone again. We have over 80 people who have registered for today's webinar. I'm joined by Blair Winnens, our, our speaker today and presenter. We're going to be covering the topic of e-commerce 101. Um, so this is an introductory uh, uh, webinar to e-commerce. For those of you who are not familiar, who do, do not currently have a website, you can ask your questions by either uh, using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen or raising your hand and I will unmute you. Um, as well as you can use the chat also. We have, um, we have about an hour to cover this topic today. I think uh, uh, Blair will agree that it takes a lot longer than an hour to know everything you need to know about e-commerce. So today's presentation is intended to give you an introduction to it. Um, you will need to do more follow-up. You will need to do more research after this, but at least you'll get uh, the introductory information that you should know before launching your e-commerce site. And um, I wanted to let you all know that this programming, this webinar, as well as other future webinars are brought to you by a collaboration of the Western Mass uh, Business Technical Assistance Providers that includes Common Capital, Valley Community Development Score, the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center, uh, Franklin County CDC, and uh, the Mass Growth Capital Corporation and our stakeholders from the Small Business Administration, UMass, Amherst, and the state of Massachusetts. So welcome today uh, to Blair Winnen. Thank you for joining us today. Thank Thanks you. for having me. <laughs> All right, go ahead and take over and start your presentation. All right, I'm gonna share my screen on here. Give me one second. Um, hopefully everybody can see that now. Um, so yeah, this, uh, 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 this is basically just going to try and cover as many different topics. E-commerce is like, uh, have been mentioned, it's, it's really just a wide and varied um, uh, topic. And uh, we'll try and just kind of get everybody up to speed on what are the basics and, and what are the things to just pay attention to and, and how to move forward. Um, so the, uh, let me just go to the next slide here. Um, so basically, the you know some of the questions you guys might be asking yourselves now, obviously in these uh, the time uh, that we're in, uh, needing to move onto online, selling online is is more uh, you know the the need is very very immediate. Um, you know these are some of the questions that normally you know we're going to try and talk about here. You know I need an e-commerce shop. Uh, you know I have an existing website. Um, I need to accept online gift cards. Um, I, I have no idea where to start. It needs to be easy. Um, some, uh, we're gonna address the topic of just, you know, people might need, you know, in-person and online payments. Um, there, I have a feeling that there's, there's a lot of different, you know, scenarios for everybody uh, uh, involved here. So um, basically the, the important thing to remember is that your ideal e-commerce solution is gonna really depend on your business, the industry and the needs. Um, there is not a magic bullet out there for everyone. There's a lot of different types of services. Um, what we're gonna cover today are some of the most uh, common ones, but that doesn't mean that you know, these are the end all be all solutions. Um, really it's gonna depend on you know, what you have set up currently and where you're looking to go and what, you know, from, from there you can kind of depend, uh, determine some of the best partners to work with. Um, there are a lot of them that are industry specific and uh, we'll touch on a little bit of that. Um, but uh, where we like to kind of just start off is <laughs> the basics and, you know, you're gonna need to get paid and this is really just, um, you know, uh, you know, just a, a, a whoop. Um, going to be a little bit technical, but you know, really we wanna make sure that you're getting paid <laughs> first and foremost, and that you understand the process of how the money flows in an e-commerce setup. Um, this, you know, don't, don't despair. This is gonna, you know, I, I, you need to understand some of this, uh, these concepts in order to decide where to go next. Um, and in some cases, you know, uh, some uh, of you might already have some of these things in place, but there's the, the terminology can be just very confusing and we're going to just try and break it down a, a little bit so that you can understand just how the money flows um, in an e-commerce setup. Um, so the, the first thing, you know, getting the money to your bank, you know, your, your bank, you know, if you have, especially if you have a local bank, just doesn't have a way to process credit and debit card transactions. 
um, you need to find uh, what's called a merchant services provider. And some of you may already have those. Um, if you don't have one, you know, basically your bank may uh, recommend certain partners and uh, be able to, to help you identify merchant services provider. Um, but there's, there's, like everything, there's many different types of uh, them, but they mostly all involve processing credit and debit card payments. Um, if you already take any sort of credit cards uh, or debit cards payments, then you already have a merchant uh, a services provider. Um, it's uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, just trying to get processed credit cards. There needs to be a place that can process the transactions. Um, but they, each of them are a little bit different depending on, you know, how you use them. Um, basically, the different types of merchant services are uh, merchant accounts, point of sale, uh, or mobile payments. Um, something called a virtual terminal that you may have heard all of these types of uh, uh, you know, terminology before in some way, shape or form. Um, but it's, uh, we're going to try and just go through them all. Um, but at the, at the core of everything is a merchant account. Um, and this is simply a place where, you know, uh, funds from, you know, a process transaction, a credit card, gets deposited and transferred by your merchant services provider into a, a, you know, into your business account that you specify. So it's like this holding place for a, a transaction that comes through, somebody pays with a credit card, the money goes into the merchant account, and then you've set it up so that the merchant account then can move the funds to your bank in a, in a swift process. Um, and I'm going to, I see, uh, um, oh, sorry, the, the chat, I can see everybody's uh, uh, popping in on that. But um, that's the, the, the larger standalone providers are known as direct processors. And you know, your bank might have a relationship with um, you know, one of these processors that basically just like can process the, the credit card transaction and go th directly through them to your bank. Um, for e-commerce, you, you know, if you don't have a merchant account, you're going to need one. Um, you know, the, uh, your bank may have a relationship and you can certainly talk to them and, and see what they recommend. Um, they, they even come in different flavors, everything does. Um, and we're, we're going to get to the topic of payment services providers, but you know, they re basically require some way of just like communicating that a, a, a transaction took place and then you know, verifying that the funds are being transferred from one place to another um, and getting that uh, all the way through to your bank account. Um, some of you who have existing brick and mortar stores you know, might have you know, a, a, a point of sale service. This is another form of merchant service. Essentially, this is just you know, a piece of hardware that has software on it that essentially communicates when a a uh, chip is, you know, a card is swiped or a chip is, uh, is gone through. And that basically goes and talks up to you, the merchant account and says, this transaction went through, make these funds available, and then go back down to your, uh, to your, your bank account. Um, there's different, you know, types of those uh, that are available, even as, you know, more and more uh, recently, you know, mobile and tablet versions, which are cheaper, cheaper than some traditional terminals, but, uh, you know, the levels of support are, uh, not necessarily as great there. Um, some of these can be bundled with on other online services for a seamless experience for you and your customers. So that it's basically, you know, mirroring something that, you know, they would experience uh, in a checkout process in store. Um, virtual terminals, basically, again, it's, it's this it's setting up your existing computer hardware, you're, you're, you basically load this program onto it. Uh, you might plug in a little USB reader or something and be able to swipe a, uh, a credit card. Um, again, it's the same type of concept of just, it's a way that communicates to the, the credit card that was swiped and goes up to the merchant uh, 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 processor, the credit card processor, verifies that everything's good, holds the money, and then transfers it to your bank account. Um, this is, you know, uh, everybody, I think there's experience in virtual terminals. They're a little less common um, nowadays, and there's a lot more other options, which we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but payment gateways are also just the same type of thing. So this is where we start getting into e-commerce. 
Um, and you know, if you have a website, you can't just you know have a form on your website that you know takes a credit card number because you don't know what necessarily to do with it. And you know, so what you have to do is you you know that number has to go through a payment gateway that then acts as that software that pro, you know tells your merchant account that looks like, hey, this this transaction happened. How do we get the money over to it? Um, some even offer merchant accounts themselves. They kind of bundle the process, but a payment gateway is essentially something that is uh, able to uh, securely and uh, uh, handle the credit card number, communicate it over to your merchant account and verify that the transactions can take place. And, and the reason that you can't just do that on your website yourself is because there's something called PCI compliance. And the credit card companies, you know, in the I I kind of started out in the wild west of uh, uh, e-commerce uh, about 20 plus years ago, and before there was any real standards, like you could just take a credit card number on your website and then you know communicate it to however you needed it. And the credit card company said, "Oh, hey, 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 wait a second. There needs to be a, some standards here, and there needs to be some ways of." just securing customer billing information. And that falls under the banner of what's called PCI compliance. You're gonna hear that a lot. Um, you're gonna see that a lot if you, you know, are just getting started um, with uh, e-commerce in, in any way, shape or form. Um, so it's really just uh, you know, a, a way of you know, maintaining the security and taking it, you know, you don't want to have be responsible for that. The credit card companies want you to use these payment gateways to be able to transfer uh, that information. Um, but there's different, again, there's the, these are kind of the basic concepts um, and there's different flavors of these that will make this process easier. So, so don't, uh, don't worry if this is still sounding confusing. I'm just trying to lay the groundwork of, of where we're, we need to get to um, in order to actually take and process a transaction. Um, and that leads us to payment services, service providers. So these are you know, what you're gonna be, start to become much more familiar with. These are uh, providers that kind of bundle uh, all those different concepts with the merchant account and the payment gateway. Um, and they also provide virtual terminals and, and different uh, aspects in the point of sale system all in one, uh, setup. So, you know, you don't necessarily need to think about, um, you know, well, I have a payment gateway for this and uh, my, my connected to my merchant account. And then we have a separate service that we're using for terminals. They're trying to figure out how to bundle all those things together and make those things easier. Um, there's one drawback um, is that, you know, in some cases you, you're, you're not, uh, they're, they're trying to make it so easy so that you don't need to worry about a merchant account that they they act as the merchant account for you and you know anybody who's sold anything on paypal or, or has thought about this is that there we have many clients who have run into this very issue like you're technically using their merchant account and that's why you can't you know you get paid by a paypal and you know they will charge you an extra fee if you want that money the same day and what they'll do is they'll say, hey, it's free if you want to wait a couple of days and just process it as a separate, you know, normal transaction. But they it's it's basically meant to just, you know, be a, a, a there. They are the clearinghouse for that type of stuff. Um, and uh, so I just want, you know, this is there's there's pros and cons and, and things to just pay attention to, um, you know, when setting all these different types of, uh, of, of things up. Um, the danger too is that PayPal, there, there's horror stories about people who are getting uh, their, their PayPal accounts frozen uh, and you know, for no good reason. And they're then struggling to deal with PayPal and figure out how to, uh, how to get them uh, dealt with. There's, there's definitely you know, uh, positives and uh, negatives to, to doing uh, some of these services. Um, but we'll we'll dive into uh, these a little bit deeper and, and look at what are the some some of the simpler solutions there. Um, so that again, I can't reiterate it enough. The PCI compliance aspect, you know, is just huge. Um, the the credit card companies just want to make sure that cardholder data is safe, and um, it really is your responsibility to ensure that it's 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 kept 
safe um, and that you're not just handling credit card numbers willy nilly. Um, you know, there needs to be a secure process for maintaining that. And, and anybody that you work with should be, you know, a compliant provider. Um, it, you, you don't want to be put into the, what's called the scope of PCI compliance for any reason. You know, you want to just take yourself out of that. It's just, you know, mitigates a lot of risk on your end. So that being said, um, how do we, how do you pick the right one? And, you know, for uh, a lot of this, um, you know, I, I think the, uh, you know, there's a lot of things to, to think about, but most people, if they're just getting started, you're going to want to err on the side of simplicity first. Um, and the, the reason that all these things exist and, you know, that people, it's easier to bundle some services is that um, the fees are what gets you. And this is what, you know, everybody, anybody who's just got, uh, uh, you know, set up an e-commerce store or, or gone down that road is that, the, the fees will um, are, are what just you really need to pay attention to. The simplicity of getting up and running and just having like one simple thing that you just set up is great, um, but they, they obscure a lot of the fees and, and you're gonna really wanna dig deep uh, into how to uh, just make sure that you're, <laughs> you're aware of them and that you can work towards, you know, uh, and just figuring out ways to, to just reduce or mitigate some of those fees. So oh. Blair, we have a few questions on the Q&A and I know you've been answering most of them as they come along. So that's great. Um, but we do have some very specific questions here about withholding transactions. Do you know anything about that with some of the merchants that you mentioned? Uh, more specifically, just withholding. What, 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 I, I, can so you so one of them it? here is saying, I just started selling on PayPal and now they're holding up my first sale, even though the client is a verified user because I am a new seller. And since it's an appointment that won't take place until the 20th, I can't ask the client to say that the service was completed. Hmm. That's uh, your that that's the it's a perfect example of why PayPal it, you know it, the the dangers of of getting into that you 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 really should and I imagine you probably already have started they have like a payment uh, resolution center and it's it's going to be uh, I hate I wish I could say that there was a magic way to make that happen but it's going to be a frustrating process it, it's PayPal this is you know as, as kind of ubiquitous as PayPal is and, and uh, it's it's really they are because you're using this is this is the, the danger what because you're using their merchant account to tra transfer funds they are really hyper vigilant about fraud protection and because you know if you had your own merchant account you would be able to you know go work with your merchant provider and say you know hey th there was a fraudulent charge or there was a dispute or something like that but because PayPal is the center of that, it's it's tough to uh, get around. You're just going to have to work as best you can with their their payment resolution center. Right, and I assume that's also true for Stripe, Squarespace, and any other of these merchant services online. That folks will have to work through it like directly through their customer service. If you're using their merchant account, so so basically what we're going to get into in a little bit is talking about you know that's it, it's they are great they're they're nice and easy for you to get up and start selling quickly. They're not the the thing that you want to stick with as you keep going down the line. Um, you know Squarespace and Shopify. You know they all have their own the, the uh, ability for them you to use their own emergent accounts, but they all they also give you the ability to set up and and use your own with your own payment gateway. That's where, in order to avoid the the payment disputes and the things that we're talking about, that's the direction that you want to eventually move to. Right. Great. Thank you so much. And then the um, is Eventbrite a payment service provider like PayPal or Square? Is our events ideal for that? Is that did I hear you that um, correctly? I believe this person is asking about Eventbrite specifically, which is I it's another platform that's used for events. Correct. Yes, they they it's the same type of thing, um, and you know that's the that's the whole setup. They make it nice and easy. They're bundling and kind of obscuring some of that, and they just you know the the 
uh, of what's happening, but that you're essentially, you know, unless you've set up and, and you know, gone through any of any online provider and said, here's my merchant account information, you, you have to assume that you're using theirs and that they are going to be the, the ones that are, uh, you know, going to be really, you know, all the money's th flowing through their system. So they can just decide to do whatever they want with it if they feel like they need to mitigate mitigate any sort of fraud or anything like that and that's that's the downside right um, and that's a great segue to your next up like next part here how do you pick the right one and i think that will answer a lot of the questions that are coming in through the q a great yeah and it, it's it's a challenge and and you know i think that so, it sounds like from some of the comments that you know, it's it's these services are really great because they 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 can get you up and running quickly. Um, that's the that's the upside. Um, but you, you need to look at uh, everything and start examining things based on what are your needs. Um, you know, everything from just like if you're getting a new store online store up and off the ground. Um, you know, do you have an existing site that you're looking to add something onto? Um, do you need, you know, in-person, you know, sales as well as online, um, you know, restaurants are going to have a whole other, you know, it needs to be kind of coordinated, um, you know, if they're doing online ordering or anything like that, that there's a lot of specific services for those, for, for them in, in particular. Um, do you have complex products? Is it not something that's simply just like a widget that then, you know, somebody checks out and, and it just ships? Is it something that needs to be configured in any way? Um, those, these are the types of questions that are going to determine what the best solutions are for you uh, um, down the line. Um, you know, the, the easiest uh, solution is to use a hosted service. And, and this is something like, you know, Shopify or somebody had mentioned Eventbrite, Squarespace, um, Etsy for, uh, you know, the um, uh, basically crafts and custom made uh, items. Um, and uh, a big commerce is another one. Um, Shopify and Etsy at, at basically have branded themselves as like the one stop solution where everything can uh, is kind of bundled into one account. Um, Etsy is, uh, you know, th there's just knowing uh, some of the scenarios that the, the complications that have come up is that they're also they they kind of charge people you know almost like a marketing fee for listing their items uh, on that site and and it's there's a lot of the, the fees are where you need to start really paying attention because um you know it is easy um to get up and running on these um but it's uh you know you're going to want to main eventually get to a point where you're maintaining a lot of control over those fees um, was there another question? I, <laughs> yeah, jump yes, right in. Yes, we have a few questions here. Um, Blair, can you specifically address Venmo? They're owned by PayPal, but they charge no fees. So how do they get paid? Um, Venmo is, they are owned by PayPal. It's, it, it, you're essentially still using um, the, the PayPal network to be able to do that. Um, uh, I, Venmo's kind of a, it, it is a almost a standalone payment gateway. Um, I, I believe that they get, uh, and, and I, I'm not an expert on Venmo, but um, I, I believe that they, uh, it, it's more just about the sharing of uh, the, the like sharing a lot of, of cash, correct? Because it is correct. my understanding that if you're sharing cash only, there's no fee. But if you do pay with a credit card, there will be a fee to the person who's sending in the cash. Correct. Yes. And so it's basically, you know, they're taking advantage of the, the bank to like EFT bank to bank transactions and, you know, offering it as a free service, but they will eventually make money off of uh, anytime a credit card is processed, somebody's making money. There's, right. there's no question about it. So it's, that's how, uh, PayPal and their underlying network is basically just set up. I mean, it's that, um, you know, 2.9 plus 30 cents trend, uh, percent plus 30 cents per transaction. It's, it's, that's the most common setup, uh, around. And if, if they can, they can make that up with volume, um, and get a, you know, uh, that's basically their game plan. Great. And, and can you tell us a little bit more about Shopify, how it works? Your, you know, your one minute summary of how Shopify sure. works. 
Shopify, so Shopify just started out as kind of like, I, hey, you can, we can build you an e-commerce site and, uh, and, you know, we'll host it. You know, we have all these tools that are all ready to go, just load in your products and you're good. Um, but they've evolved to now say, you know, okay, well, we're now offering our own merchant account and payment gateway and a, a point of sale hardware and um, a, a lot of other different aspects of the commerce experience um, to essentially just, you know, you know, get people up and running on, online. Um, they, they've got a pretty good system. They've got a lot of themes you can choose from to set up your store. Um, it's the, you know, but they're, again, one of the things that you need to pay attention to as you're signing up for all of this stuff is the, is, is that those fees. And what'll happen is Shopify doesn't let you, you know, kind of modify any of the um, underlying code. If you're a developer, they'll let you kind of go in and tweak some of the themes, but you're not actually getting access to any of Shopify's uh, uh, code base or anything like that. So you have to install what are called apps. And this was, you know, some of the apps are free, some of the apps are paid. And, you know, what'll happen is, is that Shopify takes a cut of those apps. Like every time an app is sold, Shopify also gets a cut of that. And, you know, some of the apps that you need to be able to run your online store are fairly essential. Like if you're, you know, you want to connect it to, um, you know, uh, there's a different services we'll talk about in a little bit, just in terms of shipping and things like that. You're, you're, you're paying, you start to pay and all of those apps are based on a monthly subscription fees and they will start to really add up quickly. Um, so you just need to be mindful of, <laughs> what's the, the cost benefit of being able to have something like that that enables you to get up and running quickly versus the, the ongoing monthly costs that are going to keep increasing. Um, so that's my, uh, you know, one minute and a half uh, take on, on Shopify. Um, right, right. And I, I myself have had some experience with this where I went through a bank to set up our merchant services account and was interviewed by the credit card processing company, had to sign a contract with them. And they offered, you know, the merchant services for me for a monthly fee. And right. in addition to the service charge per transaction, and I guess it's all dependent on the volume of, is, of, yeah. of sales that you expect to grow through the, uh, you know, to the processing service. And, um, but that's sort of like the longer, the way to do it, if you will, um, if you want to do it through a bank or through a merchant services provider, without having to go to the bank, you can do that as well, of course. Yep. Um, but some things like PayPal or, you know, um, and others that we've mentioned today, and they're much faster to get on, on board right. yourself on them. You're doing a lot of the work to give them the information. But then as we've heard from folks in this call too, they could also bring you a little, a couple of issues um, if, if they don't have the right information uh, provided from the business or just, you know, uh, PayPal has their own policies and their own ways of doing business. So you might come go into some troubles there. And our best advice for those of you, unfortunately, is uh, reach out to PayPal directly, customer service. And if you're not satisfied, they consider your other options. Correct. Yeah, uh, that that's really it's it's like I said before. It's a it's going to be a balance between ease of use and uh, the just you know getting the the exact services that you that you need at the price that you can afford too. Um, you know that's the the, the fees are you know and, and I really reiterate this later on in the presentation. The fees are just start to add up, and if you're not aware of what they where they are, just you know keeping track of that type of stuff, um, it, it it can easily get out of control. Right. One of our participants asking about eBay. It is not mentioned in your presentation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, and you know, I I, I purposely left eBay out. I mean, there's nothing. That, eBay is as you know, it, it's been around the longest. Um, unfortunately, you know, it it became. It used to be kind of like the the like. Joe on the street could go and just list something for sale. And now things have kind of just started to get consolidated into, you know, uh, you know, resellers and, and everything, just getting all of their inventory. There's nothing, eBay's, eBay's still great. And, you know, I, I think that, that it's more so that you get lost and, and 
uh, if you're just kind of have a, a very a, a simple item, it does. It's it, you, you get lost in kind of eBay's you know universe of uh, of all sorts of different things. You're not able to kind of separate yourself from you know competition. You're not able to brand properly. It's 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 really just about um, it, it, it's it's a great stopgap solution. And if you're just looking to you know take some pictures of uh, something and put it off for sale, but in terms of running an entire store off of eBay. Um, you know, I would say that there's probably better uh, solutions out there now. It, that's not to say that, you know, some people can't do it and are, and are successful. It's, it's really just gives you uh, the, the basic tools that you need. Um, but there's, you know, the, and, and at a minimal transaction fee. So um, it's really just uh, up to you and what your audience might, uh, uh, where they are. Um, one of the things we, we talk about later is just, you know, being where your audience is. Yeah, I would add to that, to Bla uh, that Blair, that it depends also of the level of technical ability of yourself as a business owner. Correct. eBay does require you to do a lot of the legwork um, as well as other platforms. But I find that with eBay, you kind of have to do it all, seems right. like um, uh, a little bit more of uh, uh, more work to do there, but it depends. It depends on your level of comfort with, um, you know, taking pictures and 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 uh, typing up descriptions and all of that. There's there's somewhat level of same work with all of the platforms, but um, it it depends on your level of technical ability to which platform you might want to use. Um, right. And with that, there's one person here who's asking uh, when you say um, add this to my site, Sharon asks. Do the payment services provide a technical assistance to add that payment method to their website? Um, so so uh, that's the other thing is, um, you know, the, the, the payment services, you know, basically getting some of the things on there, like, I, I, and I don't know if there's a, the, uh, if it's one of the, the next few slides or, or not, but, um, you know, basically adding some, some stuff to your existing site, um, you know, the simplest way, if you're not technical, technically savvy, and uh, it's it's going to be difficult, um, unless you know the Shopify and PayPal have ways to just uh, it's the the simplest way to do it is just like adding the, these payment buttons on your existing site. You log into Shopify or PayPal. You say, "I here's the product that I want to sell, and here's how much it, it should be." They give you the code um, that just say like drop it onto your page and it creates a little button on your website that when you click goes to Shopify or PayPal and allows somebody to check out. You get, you know, can, you know, can kind of make, they get an order confirmation, you collect the payment. Um, but it's, you know, if, if that's as simple as you want to be able to do it, then the, the these, these buttons are a great solution. Um, but in terms of like integrating an entire payment gateway, uh, it, you know, there's, there's, you, you need somebody with technical knowledge to be able to do that. Um, you know, that that's the, uh, there's a lot of setup that's involved. And, and again, this is where maintaining the PCI compliance aspect, like you need to do it in a way that, you know, essentially you're following their instructions. Um, and if you don't do it in a way that's PCI compliant, you can put yourself at risk. Okay, thanks. Please continue with your presentation. We'll keep asking questions as we go along. Great. Um, so uh, basically, the the if you need to do a, a mix of just in person and online selling too, there's you know Square and PayPal and Shopify. They all have kind of the combination of you know, hey, we can help you create a, a site, and we'll sell you or lease you the uh, hardware to be able to take uh, in person transactions as well, and it it, it creates a uh, a bit of a you know a seamless experience at least for the the order management and and things like that on your end. Um, these are uh, you know great solutions and Squares kind of become uh, ubiquitous as well. PayPal is a little late to the game. Shopify has its own uh, whole uh, setup for point of sale systems that uh, is really nice and slick looking and just it all integrates with their um, their online platform. So. If that's a direction, a direction that you're looking to go, you know, they, they even have stuff that's custom specific square at least does for like restaurants and retail. Um, they've got a lot of different uh, options on there. But again, the fees are where you really need to, to pay attention.
um, you know, the, in the agreements, like, are you leasing it, the hardware? Do you own it? Are you leasing to own? There's a lot of different options that are available. Um, if you've got, if you've got a, a, any sort of complex product, um, this is, this is where anything that needs to be customized, this is where you're going to be really disappointed with any of the existing options. Um, you know, it, it's, this is where, you know, you're going to really uh, either fit, ha, need to figure out how to simplify the process and make it as easy as, you know, make it just make it easier um, and, and adapt uh, in that way. Or you, this is where you're going to really need to, to talk with a developer to figure out how to customize those types of things. And if this is, you know, uh, any route, if this is the route that you're, you're going to go down, it need, does need to be um, done in a custom fashion and you need to work with somebody that, that knows what they're doing. There's not going to be a, a, a off the shelf solution um, that's, that's going to do what you need it to do. Um, you're just going to be frustrated and disappointed with what the, the existing options out there because places like Shopify and uh, uh, big commerce and, and Square and, and, and everything like they're, they're really just interested in creating a one size fits all uh, and, you know, trying to appeal to the 95% of people who are just like looking to, to sell. If you're in that 5%, you really need to, to think about how you're uh, going to be selling that product. Um, and that's, again, I'm just reiterating here, make friends with somebody who understands just even basic code, um, you know, even the, the, the PayPal buttons they're giving you, they say, copy and paste this onto your website. You need to make sure that, you know, you're doing it in, the right place in the right way. Um, and in, in, in just in my experience, unless you've got somebody that you can rely on that understands you know, the basics of what they're doing with that stuff, it's, it's really difficult for you know, to, to, to have just build an online presence and an e-commerce presence without one. Um, it's, it really just does come down to, this is a, e-commerce is a technical process and you want some, that somebody who understands it and who is able to, um, you, you know, kind of give you advice based on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So Blair, that's a great um, segue to a question that we have here from Tomo. Mm -hmm. He's asking, he would like to hear about what to write in the online store policies. What would be your best suggestion? What to write in, in online store policies? Yes. In terms of, I'm assuming that means just in terms of like shipping and returns and things like that. I would assume so. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, if you, there's a lot of uh, places online that'll help you uh, kind of like almost get started with a template, um, you know, to, to write some of those, um, you know, really you need to just, it, it, a lot of it's going to come down to, um, you know, what you're paying and again paying attention to some of those fees and things like that and knowing what you're paying for you know if you're shipping products to customers like you know and what is your return policy and what does it charge to restock those types of things um you know really it, it's going to come down to just whatever makes the 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 most most sense for you but there are a lot of online places that'll help you write those like say like you know what type of business do you have are you shipping products are you doing and they they'll almost help you put together you know a, a recommendation of some of those policies right and then uh, we have a participant who's raised their hand Kristen um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you and you can answer your question So Kristen, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Oh, maybe she. Okay, well, when while she, um, uh, go ahead, Kristen. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. I apologize. My no problem. I saw, I'm sorry. Oh, you re you don't have a question? No, I hit the wrong button. I'm very sorry. Oh, okay, no problem. No problem. Okay, so we have another question here. Um, uh, Blair, do you have any suggestions on how one would drive traffic to a small business site? And why would someone find me when Amazon and other huge companies dominate the net? It's a great, it's a great question. And I, I get into a little bit of that um, a little further on in the presentation. Um, so, you know, okay. bear with me. <laughs> Sounds good. Keep going. Okay. Um, 
so, you know, I, I put together a little bit, uh, you know, pros and cons list, um, some of which we've already been talking about, you know, for some of these, the hosted sites versus kind of a DIY or something custom. Um, and again, it's the ease of use uh, the, on, for hosted sites, you know, pros, very easy to set up. They have a lot of great looking templates. You don't have to, you know, you can kind of select something right out of the box. Um, they do have a ton of plug and play apps for a variety of purposes, such as shipping, postage, order fulfillment, and all that fun stuff. Um, connecting with your social profiles and all that, that like that you can kind of just like, you know, add all these things right on. Um, they give you the option of using their merchant account or getting your own payment gateway. So you do have a little bit of choice there to, in terms of how you want to set it up. And again, like integrations with, you know, advertising and marketing services like Shopify has and big commerce have plugins for that will actually list your products on Amazon and things like that. You need a whole, that's a whole other separate conversation, but they do have the capability of, of pushing those things out there and they have, they can connect with some of these advertising marketing services. Um, the cons is that they're one size fits all and, and they're very just difficult to customize. Um, the, 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 the fees on some of those things are just going to add up quickly and just making it much more expensive to grow. Um, you're also locked in and tied to their platform. Um, I, several clients um, who, you know, they, big commerce and Shopify will say, oh, well, we're now changing how all of our templates work and you need to upgrade all of this stuff and that it's this stuff isn't going to work and things like that. And they just, they can do, they just do that at a moment's notice. Um, they try and give people a little bit of time to prepare, but if you don't even understand it, like when they're saying like, we're, we're changing our, uh, the, uh, the JavaScript of how all this different stuff works, then you might not understand that that's happening all of a sudden, you know, the, the day comes and your site's broken. I, I, I've seen that happen. Um, and, you know, then you're continually needing to, um, you know, kind of keep up with them. Um, and some, even though they have all these great apps and plugins and things like that, um, some of the, sometimes, you know, somebody builds their store around one that is, that is available. And then all of a sudden the, the company that created the plugin and app just stops supporting it. They stop, you know, just uh, updating it. They stop uh, making it available. And it, it just has, you know, can be crippling when you're relying on some of those third party uh, services and they just shut down. Um, so it's, you know, that, that, that's the, the, the cons of, of there's just to be aware, aware of. Um, you know, there are ways of doing your own DIY or custom site. You know, the, there's like, you know, some open source solutions, there's WordPress, uh, which, and WooCommerce, there's, uh, there, there's a whole range of other, um, you know, uh, free downloadable things, but you, again, you need somebody technical to be able to, to set that stuff up for you. And um, it can, it can generally, the pros here is, is that this is where you can, it can offer the lowest long-term cost because you're able to kind of pick and choose the things that you want to be able to integrate and you're only paying you know the the for the things that you essentially need and you can also in negotiate individual rates in some cases um you know it can be customized for your exact business products and workflow um you know again this is much more beneficial if you're in that kind of five percent versus the 95 percent of people who are just you know the selling normally um, and it, it also just detaches you from being tied to, you know, some sort of single platform or service so you can choose to change as you scale. Um, the downside is that, that it's the initial investment to customize your site and can be really expensive and time consuming, um, you know, and possibly leaving you with you less budget to market the site, which is also a mistake. Um, and you, this is a case where, you know, if you have got your own solution, you definitely need to have a developer at the ready in case somebody, if something goes down because you, you're, you know, if you decide to go down this route, you, you don't have any support. Um, and, and that's, you know, going to be a big worry. So th those are, there, there's pros and cons on each side, um, definitely. Um, but uh, our, our advice is, unless your product is overly complex, start with a hosted payment services provider, like, you know, Shopify, uh, you know, big commerce, uh, a square site or anything like that. Um, they, they're really ready to go right out of the box. Um, and then once you're ready to scale, then look at, you know, okay, how do I transition to something that might be a little bit more tailored for me? Um, I, I want to touch on, and I'm trying to pay attention to the time as well, but as shipping is, you know, one of these things, and some of you might not have to deal with this at all, but it's, it's really, people expect 
free shipping. Uh, and once Amazon started it, people expect it. You need to run numbers, um, and it, the, the rates are also you know negotiate with uh, the whatever provider you're using UPS, FedEx. Like really need to uh, pay attention to shipping because this is it, I've, it makes or breaks stores. Um, it really does. Um, and you know running those and crunching those numbers. You know, do you work the cost of free shipping, or you know, do you set price points where shipping um, it becomes free after a certain amount? Like you need to you need to know that and be aware of it. Um, and it it's um, it. it, it you need to experiment with it too. Um, there's there's services that can make some of the process easier in terms of just the actual fulfillment. Um, Ship Station and Shipping Easy um, are, are two very popular ones, and they're integrated with most of the hosted services. Um, and you know, if you've got inventory management that you need, it also you know it kind of handles all of that uh, back end fulfillment. Um, and shipping is just, it's gonna be, it, it's its a conundrum. And um, every single uh, client that we've worked with on an e-commerce basis has had, you know, it, it's a struggle to figure it out. Um, and then sales taxes too. Um, oh, I, is there a question? Yes, uh, there is a I question. All right, um, I know you mentioned a couple of times, which makes absolute sense to, for some of the folks, depending on their needs, it really depends on the type of product or service that you're providing, whether or not how comprehensive or how um, complex your website should be for e-commerce. So yeah. for those of you who have a, a, you know, a product with lots of features and lots of options and price points, you would be um, better served perhaps at working with a, a developer to help you develop your e-commerce site. For some of us who have maybe just one or two or three products and that's it, and there's not a lot to it, um, some of these DIY solutions could work. And a lot of these yep. providers that you mentioned earlier, like Shopify and, and, you know, and uh, Squarespace, et cetera, some of those might be sufficient for you. And um, they actually will, you will have the ability to create your own website through them as well, as opposed to a separate website. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because one of the participants said that working with the developer sometimes could be very expensive. It is, yeah. Uh, it, it can absolutely be very expensive, and so but, let's talk about that real quick. What would yeah. be a, 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 um, in your experience, Blair? Um, and we're not going to hold you to this necessarily. Sure. I know it's very general, but um, although some others might disagree and they might hold you to this, could you give us an idea of price depending on how big a website might be? Just, uh, absolutely. Uh, in terms of just working with a developer, uh, like. So working a with range. a developer, a range. a range in terms of getting a site and off, off the ground, most of the developers are probably going to charge hourly. And in, in my experience, it, that hourly rate can range anywhere from, you know, 40 or $50 an hour. Um, and I, I will say that we're, we charge about 150 an hour. And I know that it can go even up higher from there. Um, and generally, it, towards the lower end of the spectrum, you're going to get what you pay for. Or, I mean, it's, you know, basically, uh, it, it generally, if somebody's doing development services for $30, $40, $50 an hour, um, it's going to take them three times as long to get it done than somebody who's charging $150. Um, you're going to end up paying the same amount. So it's, it's it, uh, some of it's a time difference. But there's, if a, a simple website, you know, working with the developer to get something, you know, if it's just, you know, helping you through the process of getting something set up on Shopify, um, that's a couple hours um, of, you know, just working with you, selecting a theme, depending on how many products you have, how organized um, your product uh, spreadsheets are, like, you know, you, we can, we've gotten Shopify um, sites up and running in, you know, an afternoon. Um, the, the DIY, the hosted things, that's where it's going to take a, a bit more time. Um, it's going to be, you know, cause that you can obviously work from templates, but the cust any sort of customization involved, it all depends on what you're looking for. 
Um, you know, uh, we've done e-commerce, you know, customized e-commerce websites. Um, I would say anywhere from starting at $2,500 and, you know, as high, it, it just kind of goes up from there. It just, <laughs> um, it all depends on functionality. Um, but I would say kind of a, a sweet spot would be, you know, somewhere between 5,000, 7,500, you could probably get um, a site uh, custom built. Um, right, and this is soup to nuts. This is the whole thing. This is not just like you thing. said, not just setting up your Shopify site or you know Squarespace site. This is like creating your own e-commerce site, which is with your own domain, your own URL, your own domain. Right, and you can do that with with Shopify or anything like that. But you know, if you're going to do something that's like a custom, if like say that you've got uh, like a, a, a an existing website, it's on WordPress, and you want to uh, be able to add in functionality, uh, e-commerce functionality. You're going to have to work with a developer who's going to, you know, install WooCommerce, which is basically, you know, the the e-commerce engine for WordPress, and they're going to go in and, and configure it, and that it's it's you know style it, make sure it matches all the. Uh, the styling on your existing site, go through tests, add in your products, test it, you know, hook up your payment gateway uh, and, and everything for you and, and go through that process. It, it's, it's, it's a significant amount of work. Right. And one piece of advice for folks who are watching this too, is that when you are, um, when you are trying to select a developer, you should always ask for references and know what sites they've worked on as well. Absolutely. So you can Absolutely. get an idea of what type of work, uh, quality of work uh, the developers have been putting together. Uh, so always ask for references, ask for examples of their work. That, that, that's great. Um, uh, real quick, someone here asked uh, to please comment on WordPress, do it yourself sites. Yep. What are your comments on that one? I mean, it's, it, it works. Uh, and they, again, they do have, it, you need to still have a developer at the ready to be able to help with, with issues. Um, you know, WordPress, you know, it, WordPress has a hosted version too. Um, you know, uh, if you're going to go with WordPress, don't uh, host it yourself. I mean, again, it just, it gives you access to everything. And if you do need a developer, they can kind of get in under the hood. Um, what do you mean by hosting it yourself? Um, so, so that's where if you've got an existing website, you know, you, what you do is you, you not only had do you buy your domain from someplace like GoDaddy, but then you have to actually pay for your, your own web hosting um, that you own that's not using, you know, somebody else's web hosting. Um, and that gives you access to, you know, essentially you're renting a server where you can do whatever you want and you can put whatever code that you want on that server. Um, that's the, you know, uh, in, in that way you can get to the underlying bits and pieces of that whatever software that you're working on. And the, if you have a, a relationship with a developer, they can do a lot more customization for you. That's you know, right. That. And that also addresses this issue. One of the uh, participants had the question that, um, unlike WordPress, some of these other services like Squarespace, um, they own the content that you're putting out there. So you're That's, not able to take it with you when you move on to a different service provider. It's, it's, correct? that's, uh, they, they will, uh, a lot of the times, and especially if you're using one of their themes and everything like that, yes, you, you're, you know, you're essentially renting it from them. Um, and as soon as you stop paying, that's the, you know, they'll give you an export file, um, but you, it's not like you can just take that <laughs> and then just get set right set up on another store uh, the next day. Like you would have to build everything back up from scratch. Um, yeah. That's the that's the downside. I mean, it, it's it, of trying to work with a hosted provider. They make it really easy, but they make it, it to get started. But it's really really difficult to get off of them um, if you want to move. Um, okay. It's not, it's I'm going to let you continue special. with the presentation so we can sure. <laughs> on time today. Yep. Uh, uh, basically, uh, so sales taxes, I mean, this is one of those things. So, so one of the things that, uh, you need to be aware of is what's called nexus. And, uh, are you a nexus essentially means, are you, uh, being, are you liable to pay sales taxes in, a, in, in a certain state? 
Um, if you're in Massachusetts, uh, yes, and the order is being shipped within Massachusetts, unless your business is exempt, yep, yeah, you, you have your, your next, basically you, by having a business and a presence in Massachusetts, you have nexus in Massachusetts to have to pay sales taxes. Um, other states have their own rules um, and you know you need to be aware of those um, if you're shipping something to you know another state you know the way it normally works is that once you have a threshold of a certain amount of sales that are being shipped to a certain state then you are actually liable to collect sales taxes in their state um, there's a couple services that make this easy um, hosted sites like Shopify have just like integrations and plugins. There's a service called Avalara, which is a tax service that essentially makes these calculations. They get you, they get access to you know some of your your orders, and they are able to kind of automatically determine where you have uh, nexus for for collecting the, the taxes. But if you have any question at all, talk to your accountant. But it's uh, it, it is something that you need to be aware of. I mean, again, until you're hitting a threshold of a certain amount. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a big concern and all you really need to worry about is the local, your, your local sales taxes. But as soon as you, you know, you get to a point where you're doing, you know, 50,000 in, in a particular state, you're probably doing pretty well and, you know, can uh, figure, figure that out. It's just something to be mindful of um, uh, on there. So quickly for the, the, the end of this presentation. So figuring out, getting to that point, when do the sales start rolling in? And, you know, this is where, you know, getting a site is, is really just the, the first step, um, figuring out, getting your products loaded in. And, and you really need to put some time and energy into the, the, the ongoing process of marketing it, um, frequency, consistency, and time. Um, when, if you're just getting up and running, uh, we just basically recommend like as, as if you, you have an existing, if you're a brick and mortar store that has an existing customer base and you are trying to figure out how to bring, get that online and transition, um, as uh, some of you probably are in these, the, these times, um, you know, if you haven't been collecting emails, like that growing that customer base is a great way to start. Um, it's a great uh, investment um, and, you know, marketing via email is one of the lowest, lower cost ways to do it, but you need to, you know, build a, a loyal uh, and uh, a, a loyal list and figure out how do I, you know, reward people for coming back. Um, you know, previous customers are going to be your best source of, uh, uh, you know, kind of recurring revenue on, on that. So just think about that. Um, search and social as you're setting up a site, you know, think about what people would search for. And, you know, th this is just kind of the, the basics of search engine and social optimization is just kind of like, what are the terms? What are the, the things are that putting yourself in the, 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 uh, the heads of your customers and where are they? Are you in, are you in the right places? Are they on Instagram? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? Like what are, how are you interacting with them and how do you kind of uh, are reaching out to them? And it, it does it involve creating a little bit of just, you know, where, how, how would somebody find me um, or how would I want them to find me? Um, paid in organic, um, you know, there's, there's, you know, organic is just like, yeah, I have a store and, um, you know, basically, uh, you know, we want to be able to just hoping that people find you, you search engine optimization, uh, email, and just the, your general social media following. Um, you want to, you know, get to a point where, you know, you are relying on uh, organic uh, uh, traffic to your site. But in the short term, you want to, there's paid options for doing search ads, um, shopping ads, getting your products uh, out in different uh um, uh, places and social ads um, as well um, uh, on Facebook, uh, you know, uh, has a, a, a lot of different advertising options on there. Um, you know, basically looking at, you know, generating awareness and moving people down this funnel here from awareness of your product uh, and brand consideration and actual purchase. And then, you know, a post sale, like how do I build loyalty for this person to kind of, you know, keep coming back? Um, don't spend a ton of money on advertising until, uh, you know, that you basically test a few things out and are confident with, with what works. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, kind of the, the advantage of living in this day and age is that you can test out a lot of different resources, um, and ways to 
um, to, to uh, uh, ways to choose to go with your advertising um, and before you decide to sink in, you know, wait till you find something that works. My other recommendation is data, uh, track it and, and use it. <laughs> um, you know, things like Google, every one of the hosted platforms has their own analytics. Um, Google Analytics um, is also a great resource to just know where your sales are coming from, being able to follow back. What am I doing? Oh, how am I advertising? And just, you know, is, is it working? Um, keeping track of your best customers and work to understand their characteristics. Um, keep track of the fees that you're paying um, because anything that eats into your profit, e-commerce, all is the, like all of those fees and where can you can reduce it. Um, and ask for customers for feedback on your site. Like you want to be continually improving it. Um, and, and that's kind of the, the, the data is just going to help you do that. Um, look for trends um, and capitalize on that. Identify bottlenecks in your checkout process or the experience on your site. Um, you know, if you don't know how to do any of this yourself, like, again, that's find somebody who can look at the numbers and help you. Um, you know, that's where, uh, you know, you're going to, the, the data is, is that you're going to be generating on there that can help you, um, just in so many different ways to just improve the overall experience. And it's, it's incremental improvements are going to, what really just help build, uh, good e-commerce sites. Um, so we're, we're. Past two o'clock now. Um, I, I've, I've got a, a you know, we'll, we'll make this available, but there, uh, you know, we've got a link to all the services um, and all the providers and things like that that were mentioned in this presentation. There's a PDF download for that. Um, and, you know, I know I touched on the marketing, and there were some questions on that. Um, I, I can provide a link. We've got a whole other presentation on this that, you know, digital marketing didn't demystify to, if anybody's interested on there. But uh, and we have and we have a few more questions that I would okay. like to answer. Thank you so much, Blair, for um, being with us here today. We are going over for just a few minutes. So for those of you who can, who can hang on for another five minutes, we'd like to get through some of these questions. I hope you don't mind, Blair. Are you OK? No, with go that? right ahead. OK, great. Thank you so much. Um, of course, you didn't have a choice. <laughs> just a lot of people watching you right now. Yeah. Um, so search engine optimization. Are there any quick tools or top five DIY, you know, actions, tips that you would recommend for search engine optimization? Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of goes back to the point that I made. Like, there's no, it's not an exact science. Um, there's some general rules that you just want to be able to follow. Um, and uh, the thinking about, you know, spending some time up front as you're, before you've, you know, started to like loaded in your products or done anything to the, the e-commerce store, like think about what the products are named and think about how people search for those things, like keywords and context is really important and it does get picked up by um, the search engines when they come through. So, you know, if you're, if you're naming your product, for example, be as descriptive as, as possible. Um, you know, you don't just say, you, you put something up there and just like widget. Like, you know, no, this is a, uh, you know, deluxe uh, X model, uh, 25 uh, inch, whatever, you know, just however descriptive that you can be in with that product. Um, uh, is, is just, you know, you really want to provide the context and the information that have, uh, have. And, and as far as tools, most of the hosted sites have, uh, you know, SEO sections on them that where, you know, they kind of guide you through the process. Um, but you can, you can really just, you, your best tool is to do a Google search for something that, you know, uh, that you think that, you know, uh, 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 your customers are, are, are looking for and see what pops up. Because that what pops up in the Google search results is actually this, the, the, the keywords and the terminology that those people are using to optimize their sites. So you can actually go and you know, get a sneak peek. You know, th that's all public information and, and it's, it's all right there. Like the actual what's called page titles and the meta description of, you know, which is the backbone of a lot of SEO is right there in the Google search results. And so you can start to get, see some patterns and see some trends that are, are there um, in, to be able to do that. I mean, there's a lot of great, you know, plugins depending on what platform you have and things like that. But um, that's, the, that's the biggest um, uh, advice I would give. Great. Great, and we have one last question here. Um, there's a, a Lynn Smith here. She asking if you have any suggestions for marketing a class 
She runs through Zoom. She teaches yoga and offers an online program she's trying to grow. Yeah, I mean, that's where, um, you know, thing, a service like, you know, it, it, you're, so you're creating an event and you need almost like a specific scheduling app, um, you know, or, or service to, to help you, um, you know, sell tickets essentially. And the, the, that, that's essentially what it sounds like you're, you're trying to do. So uh, a platform like Eventbrite, um, you know, uh, th there's also just, if you're doing an, an online class specifically, like, I, I can probably follow up with some, there's gonna be specific platforms that are geared towards doing that. Um, you know, off the top of my head, just Eventbrite just would be, you know, you're, you're kind of scheduling an event, it's not held at a certain time, um, would be, you know, something to consider. But there's a lot of them out there um, and it really just comes down to what's gonna work the best for your situation. Try them out. Great. Um, <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Blair, and thank you all for attending today's webinar, um, E-Commerce 101, Getting Your Business Online with Blair Winnens. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this, pro this program was provided to you, brought to you by a group of collaborators here in Western Mass, the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center, SCORE, the uh, Common Capital, Valley Community Development, the Center for Women and Enterprise and the Franklin County CDC and our stakeholders, the Small Business Administration, State of Massachusetts and UMass Amherst. We thank you for joining us today. Um, this webinar will be available um, on our Facebook page. I provided the link on the chat room. And um, if you provided us with your email address when you register for the webinar, we will make sure to get you a copy of today's presentation, correct? Yes, we will. So, yes, we will. Yeah, it'll be in PDF format. Don't mess with it. It's Blair's <laughs> uh, property. So anyways, you all have a great afternoon. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us when we send you the presentation. Thanks again for joining us today, Blair. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye, everyone.